Hey everyone, how are you doing? Um, today I'm doing physics and I'm going to be doing the electromagnetic spectrum. So this is just a family of waves, we call it the EM spectrum, and they're a series of waves which have lots of similarities, lots of differences, and you just need to know some of their features and crucially their uses. Just as a little summary at the beginning, I'm just going to remind you about what a wave is. Remember a wave transfers energy, so it doesn't matter which wave you're talking about, maybe it's a sound wave, obviously that's transferring sound waves into your ear so you can actually hear what someone's saying, or it could be a water wave. But the crucial thing about the electromagnetic spectrum is that there's no need for particles, so these waves transfer energy without the need for particles, and that explains why the sound waves don't actually fit the family of waves which make up the electromagnetic spectrum, because they need particles. First of all, you need to know that they're transverse waves. And that means that the vibrations occur at right angles to the direction in which the wave is travelling. Second of all, all the electromagnetic spectrum waves travel ridiculously far. And they're all waves can travel in a vacuum. And what's a vacuum? It's simply a space with no particles. And what we're really talking about is space. This means that all our waves can transfer energy across space. And it's for this reason, these properties, that we actually feel the heat from the sun because the infrared radiation from the sun, that is an example of an EM wave, is travelling to us across all those hundreds of thousands of miles in order to reach us on Earth and support life. Right, so let's just get straight into the waves. In order to work out which end we're talking about, I'm going to start at the end which is at the highest frequency. Remember the frequency of the wave is how many waves are per second. So as a diagram you'll see the waves very, very close together. So starting at one end, we have gamma rays. Now gamma rays have a very high frequency, and therefore automatically that means that their wavelength is very short. Gamma rays have a variety of uses. Because they're such high frequency, it means they're very dangerous. So we can use them to kill cancer cells if they're targeted at the right tissue. Or we can use them to sterilize hospital, hospital surgery equipment so that um, we don't have any bacteria left on them. So they're very useful in that way. However, if they're misused, they can obviously cause cancer, so that's certainly something to bear in mind. So the wave up from that, slightly lower frequency but not much, is x-rays. And that's a nice straightforward use. Remember, you're just going to use that to take images of people's bodies, because we use x-rays to look at bones, and you can see if there's any tumours or if there's any breakage. So we just use that really in hospitals to view inside the human body. Next up, we have UV rays. Again, slightly um, longer wavelength, slightly lower frequency, but not much. So we use UV. If you can't remember anything, just remember you use them in tanning beds because it's ultraviolet radiation. It depends on your exam book, but you might also state that they're used for detecting counterfeit notes, or you can use them in fluorescent tubes. Okay, then we move up again and we're at visible light, and that's just the light that we use to see in everyday life. So we'll obviously use that to create images, which our eyes can see. It's also used in photography. Then moving on up again, we've got infrared radiation. Now infrared has a variety of uses. We use that when you're using your remote control to turn on the TV or your radio. And you can also use infrared for cooking because infrared radiation is emitted by any hot object. So you'll find that inside your regular oven. And one more final use for that, and that is for communication. No, I already said that because that's to do with remote controls. Oh, hi, cat. How did you enjoy your food? She's been licking a yogurt pot. So then moving on up again, we've got microwaves. So we're getting to the point where we've got quite low frequency waves here and we've got a very long wavelength. And microwaves are used for cooking. As you would expect, microwaves cook and they cook much faster than infrared waves. Now microwaves can also be used in satellite communication. So there's a second use if you're asked by the exam. And finally, this isn't a long video, we're going to talk about radio waves. Obviously radio waves are used in communication because that's how we listen to the radio. These are our longest wavelength waves and they have the lowest frequency out of all the waves in the EM spectrum. So really that's all you need to know. Just make sure you've learned the order of the waves, which one has the highest frequency, which one has the lowest frequency, all the uses, some of the dangers associated with certain waves. And honestly, you're good to go. And just remember the fact that they travel um, in a vacuum. Um, I hope you found the video useful. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Um, big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And leave any topic suggestions down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Kitten, come on. Cat. Say hey. Lyra. Why do you always ignore me? Okay, look that poor.